seven minutes after the hour of 12 noon. It's Friday, January the 27th, 1989. We'll, we'll make it an anything Norman Friday if you, if you know what I mean. Sometimes this is a very lonely room. Yesterday afternoon, I sat here doing my show. And I noticed slowly as the 3 o'clock hour came up, more and more activity. More activity than usual up and down the halls and the adjoining studios. And at about 20, 25 minutes after 3, somewhere in that neighborhood, I found some very unpleasant news that a colleague had been tragically killed earlier in the day. I met, I met Dick about a year and a half ago at the Brothers 2 restaurant. He and a man named Mike Geyer, who was the general manager of this radio station, and I sat down for lunch one day. We were talking about the possibility of my coming over to this radio station from the other one, DLP. I eventually came to work at this radio station. And to say that Sick Norman and I didn't have some some knockdown drag out arguments would be a lie. We did. Oh my God, did we ever have some. But I still respected him and he still respected me. I'm going to do something this afternoon that. Probably every other time I've heard people ask to do this, I've, I've kind of scrunched up my nose and said, oh, jeez. We're going to ask you to turn on your headlights between three and six, okay? And there's something else I would ask you to do. We have decided to put together some type of scholarship fund in Dick Norman's memory. We sat around last night at an old-fashioned Irish wake and said, well, maybe we, could, maybe we could contribute some money to Dick Norman's favorite charity. Uh, do, do you know what Dick Norman's favorite charity was? Uh, well, how about you down there? And then we decided that Dick Norman didn't have any favorite charity. We decided that no matter what charity we could possibly come up with, Dick Norman would have found something wrong with him. Would have found some reason not to give money to it. Just because that's kind of rascal he was. But we decided there was one thing that Dick Norman would not have been offended to have his name connected with. And that is a scholarship in his memory. One other thing I wanted to say, you had a caller yesterday that was talking about the flea market promotion that Dick was on the air. And yeah, we were laughing about that last night. <laughs> claiming that the place was packed with people wall to wall. And, <laughs> you know, I went down there in that day to find a, a, a cat condo for my cat. And uh, Dick was, was about one of among three people. The other three were uh, workers there and <laughs> when I saw him I asked him if I could give him a kiss because I just wanted to squeeze his little face in my hand. Well you see almost anybody else who had pulled this this horrible, despicable stunt of lying to you about who who was down there at the flea market would have been a scoundrel, an out and out charlatan. But but you know, Uncle Dicky okay see <laughs> <laughs> you know, all right, so he got me. He well, got me the scoundrel. <laughs> and you know what was funny? Uh, when I went in there, he was, he kept trying to sell me a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was a snake oil salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and a good one. <laughs> but uh, it was funny because I was drinking my coffee, and when I... <sighs> Sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about. But when I heard that, I remembered the the smell of his skin when I bent down and kissed his cheek at the flea market. And I could smell his beard, and it was uh, smoky, and um, it was very sad. But uh, that my heart goes out to his family. I want to tell you, uh, that my first, I'd never met Dick in person, but I talked to him off the phone about uh, over a year and a half ago. Uh, at that time, there was a talk show host on that I just couldn't stand. And the more I listened to him, the madder I got. And every day, finally, I said, I'm going to put an end to this. I've never called the station before, but I'll do it. So I called the station, and the girl said, you'll have to talk to our program director, Mr. Norman. So they tased him. He picked up the phone. He said, yes, can I help you? I'm Dick Norman. And I said, yes, Mr. Norman, um, very rarely would I call to complain about a talk show host, but this particular talk show host that you've got on 
is the is the worst talk show host I've ever heard, and I just went on and on and on for about ten minutes, and and just a, a hush came over the phone, and his reply was, "God, I love talk like that," and it just <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I thought, well, I now, now, <laughs> I thought, now what do I say to the guy? I'm just stopped. But, well, uh, you, know, you know, the, the sad fact of the matter is he told you the truth. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Comes a time when you have to say goodbye. Damn it. Thanks for getting me the job, Dick. <laughs>